When it comes to red light therapy, there are a lot of technical terms thrown around. So in this video, I'm going to run through the key terms that you need to know before buying or even using a red light therapy product. So let's start with red light therapy itself. You see red light therapy or RLT also goes by the name of photobiomodulation or low level laser therapy. And of course, each of these has its own acronym as well. Now you see when it comes to the scientific community, traditionally the term low level laser therapy, LLLT was what was used, but there were also other terms such as cold laser therapy, laser therapy, and red light therapy all of these terms were used and one day a bunch of scientists sat down and said look you know what we need to come up with one simple term they decided to use the term photobiomodulation or pbm and this is what is commonly used in the science today so if you go over to pubmed and you want to do some research into red light therapy i recommend using the term photobiomodulation however when it comes to the mainstream the common man like you and i What's happened is we refer to this whole technology as red light therapy. So just to sum it all up, red light therapy is the same as photobiomodulation, which is the same as low level laser therapy. In a nutshell though, red light therapy is when one uses light in the form of red or near infrared light to create a positive impact on the body, whether it's faster wound healing, better recovery, better performance, better blood flow. There's a whole range of benefits behind red light therapy. Okay, another term you may have seen thrown around is watts. Now the term watts is commonly used when we talk about cars or heaters or light bulbs. This is because the term watts is simply a unit of power. One watt is equal to one joule per second. Now when it comes to red light therapy, watts are used in two unique ways. Firstly, it can refer to the amount of energy that the particular product is using from the grid, from the wall, or even from the batteries, if it's a battery powered device. So for instance, if you see a red light therapy panel and it says it's a thousand watts, then it's gonna use, well, on paper it should use a thousand watts when you're running it. You can always check these using a wattage meter. I think there's a product called Kilowatt. You plug it in and uh, it will tell you exactly how many watts the panel is using. And what's interesting, I've done a bit of testing over the years. And typically, if a company says it's going to use a thousand watts, the real world figures are nothing near that. Now, the other way watts can be used when it comes to red light therapy panels is the amount of light output. So this is very different to what the device is using the input value. When we're looking at the output value, this is actually the amount of therapeutic light that is being emitted. You see, let's use that example of a panel with a thousand watts. Let's say it is using a thousand watts. Some of that energy is going to be converted into light, light output, that is what we want. But some of it's going to be used to run the fans. Some of it is going to be used to run the control panel, light up the LEDs. And some of it is simply lost as heat. So a thousand watt panel is not going to put out a thousand watts of therapeutic red light. In my reviews, I actually do a wattage calculation where I try to get a rough idea of how much therapeutic light is being emitted at a particular distance. And I label this as a wattage figure. So just understand watts can be used in various ways. Uh, it depends on the context and don't get caught up into the marketing hype. If a panel says it's a thousand watts, it doesn't mean it's going to give you a thousand watts of therapeutic red light because that's a lot. Okay, the next term is joules. Now, joules again is used commonly throughout our society and this is because it is a unit of energy. How much energy is in a particular food, uh, how much energy is in a fuel, or how much energy is in the light source. When it comes to red light therapy protocols or dosing, joules are quite powerful, they're quite important because it allows us to quantify how much light we should use for a particular treatment. Now, if you're wondering, hey, well, what's the difference between a joule and watts? Well, remember a watt is one joule per second. It has a time component. So the watts looks at the amount of energy and time, the amount of energy applied over time. Whereas the joules measurement is simply the amount of energy in that moment. Now to make things really confusing, though it's not that confusing, but it may sound confusing, you also have an area component. So often you'll see in a dosing protocol that you may need 
say 10 joules over centimeter squared for five minutes. What this means is in an area of five by five centimeters, you should be applying five joules of energy, five joules of light, and then you should run this treatment for five minutes. Again, it may sound complex, but it's actually quite simple. But most importantly, you don't have to get too caught up on all of this stuff. I have done a video on dosing and why it's so complex and why I still am hesitant to make dosing recommendations because there are so many variables. Typically, when we look at the research, when it comes to dosing, they are using very small lasers, targeted devices for short bursts of time. So trying to extrapolate this data into a large panel like I have behind me is a little bit confusing. Still, it's important to understand what these terms are and what they mean. All right, so the next term to know is a photon. Now this is a tiny particle of light. In a way, it is what light is made up of. In practical terms, it doesn't really matter if you don't understand this. It's just that you may see this term thrown around where people say, the light photons are penetrating into the tissue or something like that. Just think of the term photon as light. Okay, so another term that is rather significant is the word irradiance, also known as power density. Now this is a figure that is typically reported in milliwatts or watts over centimeter squared. So this means we have an energy component, we have a time component, and then we have an area component. So when I do my reviews, I use what's called a spectrometer, which is a really fancy light meter, and I measure the power output or the energy density or the irradiance of these lights of the panels, and I'm getting the figure that I share in milliwatts over centimeter squared. So if you head over to the Light Therapy Insider shopping tool, you sort all the panels over there from the most powerful to the lowest powerful. You can do this by sorting the irradiance column. You'll see, for instance, that the Biomax 900 has a irradiance figure of about 90 milliwatts over centimeter squared. So effectively, this is saying in an area of one by one centimeter, you're gonna get 90 milliwatts of light. With this figure, you can then do some calculations and figure out the joules, the actual dosing amount over time. In practical terms, just know that if you want a really powerful panel or a powerful red light therapy product, this number needs to be high. Well, the higher the better. If you're not worried about a super high powered device, then you know, it doesn't matter as such. But if you want a product that's gonna emit light, that's gonna penetrate deeper, then the higher the irradiance figure, the better. It also makes shopping a little bit easier because if there's two panels that look exactly the same and are the same price, but one has a much higher irradiance figure, then you're probably better off getting that because effectively you're getting more bang for your buck. Hey, I'll just interrupt there. If this is confusing or you need clarification on any of these things, leave a comment down below or head over to our Facebook group. We have a really active Facebook group and uh, you can post a question in there. Um, even if you're a complete newbie, throw a question up, myself, my team, or someone uh, in the group will do their best to help out. Also, if you are enjoying this, just hit the like button. It means a lot to me and be sure to subscribe. I do a lot of reviews and um, you'll be the first to know about them by hitting the subscribe button. Okay, now we have the term wavelength. Now this is simply how one measures light, I guess. You know what? I don't have any scientific notes in front of me here. I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking out loud. When it comes to red light therapy, there are certain colors, certain wavelengths of light that we want to use. The research show, has shown that it is very beneficial to use say 660 nanometer red light and 850 nanometer near infrared light. There is a particular range. It's, it's around the 600s through to the eight, nine, even thousand nanometer range. Now, every color has a different wavelength. Blue is around 450 nanometers. Red is in the 600s. Once you get above say 700 towards the 800 nanometer range, we as humans cannot see it. It is referred to as invisible light, but there still is light there. Now these wavelengths of light are measured in what we call nanometers. Now nanometers is simply a form of measurement. It is a very small measurement and it is the distance in between the waves of the light wavelengths. You see the waves of light of say blue light are different to the waves of light of say red light. And this can be measured in nanometers. So every single color has a nanometer wavelength. Pretty much all it means if you're looking at a red light therapy device, you can see the wavelengths that it emits. It'll have a number such as 660 nm. 660 nanometers and you know okay that product is emitting 660 nanometer red light 
Great. If you've read some research and you've heard that say 808 or 810 nanometers is really good for a particular problem that you suffer from, then you want to go find a product that is emitting 808 nanometer light or 810 nanometer light. Again, my shopping tool is really good for this because you can filter and search and find products that only put out the wavelengths that you're looking for. Now we have Flickr, also known as Pulsing. Now I've done a separate video on this, so I'll put a link to that down below. But this is simply flickering or pulsed light. You see, there is some research to indicate that pulsed light, light shown at a certain frequency or a certain pulse rate, can have extra benefits or potentially downsides on the body. So some red light therapy devices have a setting within them where you can pulse the light or the light will flicker. Now, if this pulsing or flickering is built in by design and the end user can control it or it's well established that there, there is a flickering rate, then typically this is a good thing because it's in there for a reason. However, if you're buying a product that is rather cheap and inferior, it may be using LEDs and LED drivers that unfortunately create some flicker in them. And you've probably seen this with cheap LED light bulbs, for instance, and they have a flicker effect. I don't wanna get into too much detail on this because I have done a video on it, but again, this is something just to be aware of uh, and you can dig deeper into it if you wish. What about EMF? This is another term that is thrown around, especially in my reviews. EMF stands for electromagnetic field. Now, what's interesting is light as a whole is EMF. so. The more accurate term should be NM EMF, non-native EMF. But then again, all EMF is sort of natural in a way or native. It's a tricky one, but here we are referring to the potentially stressful, potentially dangerous uh, microwaves or magnetic waves or even the electric fields. Now, some people who suffer from electrosensitivity issues will pick up on this you know, they develop headaches or rashes. Fortunately, most people don't have these issues, uh, but I do test for EMF output from devices when I do my reviews. Because there are some devices out there that haven't been built properly, they're not shielded, they're using cheap parts and they do put out a lot of non-native EMF. Okay, now we have the term panel. Now, this is simply a cluster, an array of LEDs built into one large panel like I have behind me. The great thing about red light therapy panels is for about $1,000 or a bit more, you can get 300 LEDs that's gonna treat, say, a quarter of your body in a space of a few minutes. Red light therapy panels are a true game changer when it comes to consumer level, in-home, personal use uh, red light therapy products because they are relatively inexpensive, they're easy to use, and again, they treat a large area. Of course, though, you can get other size red light therapy products. You can get tabletop panels, you can get handheld bulbs, you can get torches and lasers and beds, and there's a lot of red light therapy products out there now. Chips. You may have seen this term, especially when one is referring to LEDs. Okay, so traditionally, we would have an LED, like an LED bulb or an LED lens, and within that lens or bulb, you will have one little chip. And that chip is actually what is putting out the light, the wavelengths. But what's happened over the last few years is companies have produced LED bulbs or lenses that are putting multiple chips in there. So we may see two chips in there and it will be called or referred to as a dual chip lens LED. Now companies are putting three or even four chips in there so that one little lens has three or four different light emitting chips in there, which is pretty cool. It means you can put various wavelengths you could put say 660 850 808 and 1060 all in one bulb uh, so you're going to get a nice spread of light the downside of that though is typically the power is reduced typically if it's a single chip lens you're going to get more power going to that one chip if there are multiple chips in there that power is sort of spread amongst them what about beam angle okay so this is something that used to always be marketed but I've noticed lately we don't see it as much, which is good because I've found over the years that the numbers on the box on the website didn't really mean anything. So what companies would say is, you know, our LEDs have a beam angle of 30 degrees or 60 degrees or 90 degrees. And the idea was this was the angle that the light would spread um, 
from the LED. But I've done a lot of testing and find that they didn't really match up. And maybe this is why people don't talk about it anymore. But still, that's what beam angle is. All right, what about near infrared? Well, again, this is uh, a color effectively, a, a, a group, a category of light. Uh, it's invisible to our eyes. There are three different types of infrared light, your near infrared, your mid and your far infrared. If you're using infrared saunas, you typically get a lot of far infrared light. Uh, when it comes to photobiomodulation, red light therapy, that is where we see near infrared light. Commonly used near infrared wavelengths include 808, 810 nanometers, 830, 850. Uh, we now have panels with 1060 nanometer near infrared light in it. So there is quite a range uh, and there is research into a lot of these wavelengths as well. Remember, you cannot see them, so they can be running, they can be putting out a lot of energy, but you visually cannot see them. But that light is being emitted and it actually penetrates deeper into the tissue than your regular red light. And finally, we have dimming. Now, this is simply the act of lowering the intensity of a red light therapy device. You may also see this referred as intensity control, but effectively, yeah, you're just reducing the power output why would one want to do this? Well, maybe they don't want a full dose. They're looking for a lower dose treatment, especially if they're treating their face compared to say a joint injury or they're doing a much longer treatment time. So they want to reduce the intensity uh, or maybe they want a lot of red light and only a little bit of near infrared light. So you change the intensity of each wavelength. Now I cover all of these things in my reviews. So I highly recommend checking them out if you are looking for a red light therapy device. And actually even better than the reviews is this video here. It is my buyer's guide. It is really, really good. It's got a lot of insider secrets in it. And if you are new to this space, this would be the perfect video to follow up after this one. I'll see you over there.